edit that part out. All right, hey guys, Johnny Nerd out here. Got another custom e-bike build here that I'm really excited about. I love these one-off, unique, especially unique builds. And as you can tell, this is super unique custom one-off. Um, and there's also some little hidden Easter eggs in here, unless you, you know, read the description, then you know what makes this a little extra cooler. But if you're new to this channel, I'm Johnny Nerd out. I am a custom e-bike builder professionally. It's what I do for a living, full time. I also sell all the components that you would need to complete a build like this. And I also offer help if you need a consultation, if you wanna know how to, you know, I don't know, what, what should I build? What should, what part should I use? I'm hitting a problem, hitting a snag. Book a consultation at johnnynerdot.com. I'll help you out of your rut. I'll, f I'll help you figure it. It's like 10, 20 bucks maybe for a consultation and I'll usually save you 50 to 100 bucks plus many hours of research. I've been doing this full time for a very long time so I could probably help you save a lot of time and a lot of money. This is a Furlub cargo bike. See, it's got a big opening up here for you to sit in. It's got four seat belts, so this could hold four kids. This could put four children in there. The customer that I built this for actually has two pretty big dogs that she's gonna be hauling around. But you could put four children in here and haul them around. Without a motor, I don't think I'd wanna be doing it, but you could. And this is a cool box. This is a nice big box. It's got a locking trunk in here so you can put stuff in there. Sodas, snacks, barbacoa sauce, if that's a real thing. Little, little storage underneath there. That's pretty cool. The door handle on this thing is like a Tesla almost. So you just open this up. Boom, bitty, boom. Boom, bitty, boom. Boom, bitty, boom. So this bike, obviously having the two, it's a tadpole style, which means it has two tires up front, one in the rear. But because it's so heavy up front and it's kind of high, riding around with it empty, super tippy. <laughs> it's, it feels kind of like, uh, so I'm not gonna be doing a performance test on this because I don't wanna get this thing over I think I got up to about 20 miles an hour, and at that point it was like, holy crap, this thing is gonna just go boom. If there's weight up front, I don't know whether that's gonna make it better or worse. I didn't wanna find out and have put things up there and then find out that it's for worse and then ruin their bike. So I'll let the end user figure you know, what the best way to do is. But that's a really cool, usable, functioning front basket here. And it actually comes with a canopy with like a tarp and a cover, so you could ride this on super sunny days like this or even like on rainy days. So you could turn this, maybe not for the rider, turn this into a car or for the driver, but for the rider, it could be comfortable. Up front, it's got two little battery powered headlights that turn on like that. I kept thinking, I'm like, oh, how am I gonna wire these into the battery? Oh, I didn't have to. Cool, they're just battery operated. So that's kind of cool. Okay, let's get to the meat and potatoes here. We got a CYC stealth motor. These motors are the new kid on the block. And these are, they got the newest and greatest technology. Um, highest power ratings, most versatile voltage ratings. They'll, they'll accept anywhere from 36 to 72 volt battery natively. I mean, that's something that you used to only see on the Cyclone, which people used to always get those confused. They'd be like, oh, I saw your Cyclone video. I want to get a CYC and I'm like, they're two different motors. CYC is a much nicer motor than the Cyclone. This is the stealth version, which you know, depending on where you get your ratings from, it, it'll go up to about 3,000 watts if you put a 72 volt battery on it. But in our case, this is a 52 volt, 22.4 amp hour rear rack battery pack with LG cells in it. It's got a little rear light built into it, which is nice. This, so this is gonna be big capacity, which, you know, you're, you're using a, essentially a semi truck, which doesn't get the best fuel economy, so you need a big gas tank. That's what the battery is here. So, you know, if you had a really skinny road bike and you're pedaling a lot, that's super efficient. You wouldn't need a giant battery because it's just super efficient. You could get away with a really small one. Big ones like this, cargo bikes that are just mm, gonna be plowing through it, get a big battery pack. I think this one has a 40 amp BMS, I think a 40 or a 50 amp BMS. So it could handle the power that this motor's pulling. I know I'm gonna get a lot of questions as to why didn't we mount the motor up here because there's a controller there there's a the controller is actually mounted it's not integrated as nicely as the Bafang is but inside that motor mount the controller sits in there and because of that it didn't want to play nice here it would have 
I could have done it, but it would have looked really, it looked really weird. So yeah, we did lose a lot of ground clearance here, um, but this isn't like an off-road vehicle. So it's not a big deal. And actually, I'm not even quite sure if it was able to fit up there now that I'm thinking about it. But install on these things is pretty simple actually. As long as you're okay, you know, getting the bottom bracket out, just like for any mid-drive motor, putting this in, super easy. It does, this is a louder motor than the Bafang. We wanted to put a Bafang BBS HD in here, but the way that this frame goes, the motor wouldn't clear. And that's another bonus of these CYC motors is, if you have a bike frame or a bottom bracket, that the, the Bafang needs very tight clearances. It, Bafangs usually do fit 99% of all bikes, but some they don't. And a bike like this, it wouldn't fit. So I was like, crap, we had to, you know, kind of go through and we're like, let's put a CYC in there. It's gonna be kind of overkill power wise, but you know, you don't have to use all the power that this motor has. You could always dial down. You can't go above, you know, you can't have like a small power and be like, I wanna get more. Sometimes you can, but you're gonna ruin it. It's much better to have an overpowered motor, not use it all. Anyways, you know what I'm saying. Another great thing about this CYC motor is it is torque sensing. So it senses power based on how much pressure you put on these pedals, on the crank arms. And the more pressure it feels, the more power it sends to the motor, through the chain, through your gears. So it's, it's much more natural feeling than the Bafang's cadence sensing, which just has magnets and it just senses where it is on the rotation, how quickly it's moving, like that. This just feels really, really good. You can put it all, all the way up on the highest power setting and just barely feather it and you'll just cruise along. You step on it and it, the motor will just take off. And the throttle is always there too, so you could just have it. So I really do like this system. Uh, be prepared to start seeing a lot more of these motors on my builds because I think these are gonna be probably the future. So yeah, you can see we had to put a little extension cable in here because the, the power cable ended right here. So we just had to put about a nine inch power extension cable in there. That was pretty much the only modification we had to do for the motor. Other than that, it actually was a pretty straightforward install. We have a little bit of cable slack here, just so when you're, you know, you're turning, because the front is the whole thing that does the steering, we wanted to leave a little bit of slack for the wiring cable so it didn't get pinched or get yanked out. I was really excited and, uh, to get this bike in when we discussed it five months ago, and now to see it come to life and to be out on the road and motorized, this could totally be a car replacement depending on where you live and vehicles like this, and that's like, that's where my sweet spot is. I love car replacement vehicles. You know, something with a tarp or something like that. Ugh, awesome. Again, sorry, I'm not gonna do a performance test. I don't wanna ruin this bike because it's so tippy. The performance is good. There's nothing, you put this on the highest power level and you just start pedaling it and it's, it's nothing. This is what you look like.